Friends, many of you know that I don't make a lot of mixing videos because I have a strong emphasis of teaching producing on this channel. However, mixing is important. I've said it's important. I do mix my own music. So in this video, I'm gonna share the vocal chain that I use 83% of the time. Okay, maybe not exactly. Now, before you rush to the comment section and say, every song is different and every track is different and every vocal chain is different, yes. I know. Let me clarify what we're gonna do in this video. What I'm gonna show you is, in my opinion, the best starting point for getting a great vocal chain going. This is not gonna cover what reverbs to use or what delays to use or what saturation or any of that, but instead focus on the core aspects of what you should do to get your vocals about 80% done. That final 20% is where you can add the sugar and sweetener, so to speak, with spatial effects and such. So let's do it, shall we? Step one in any vocal chain is actually not the vocal chain itself, but is the actual recording. You need to make sure that you have recorded your audio properly. Your vocals should not be pushing much past minus 6 dB at the loudest moments, and that is really the most important thing to prevent possible clipping and giving yourself some headroom to actually process. You should also make sure that you're not recording in a crappy room to prevent bad reflections, tonal buildups that will wreak havoc. So this means that you should have some basic acoustic treatment, or if not that, then use a dynamic or something like the Loudon LS208 or Shure SM7B that still sounds awesome in less than ideal rooms. Make sure you have great performances, have the vocals comped, edited, pitch correction, all that good stuff which I've talked about in other videos. If you start off with poor sounding vocals premix, then guess what? None of what I'm about to show you is gonna make it sound professional at all. So let's just get it right at the source. Trust me, it will make your life a hundred times easier. Step two, this is where you will actually typically want to start applying corrective EQ. Now, before we actually get into the vocal chain, let me just show you the vocal that we're gonna be working with. We're just gonna be working on verse two in this track that I've already got done here. So let's just go and take a look at it. I'll show you what the instrumental sounds like with it as well. And then I'll solo out the vocal so you can just hear the vocal. I changed my mind to this is just the vocal. You think you stand a chance when you've already left. There will be no next time. And then that's where it gets into the next section, which we've already done all the mixing on. So that brings us to the actual vocal chain. And the very first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is start applying corrective EQ. Now, if you've done step one properly, you will have recorded great audio. So you can hear with my raw vocal here. I changed my mind to realize. This is already sounding great already, which means that this step is usually gonna be a piece of cake. In some cases, I actually don't have to do any corrective EQ at all. So with corrective EQ, you're gonna to wanna to find offending frequencies frequencies that you need to remove at this stage in the process. So what a lot of YouTube videos are gonna say is make a super sharp bell curve and then crank it up and then just start going like this and start listening. I changed my mind. Well, all of that sounds bad. So that's a really big problem. So instead what you wanna be doing is just listening to the vocal and really trying to think through, are there any frequencies in here that are causing problems? So the very first thing I'm typically gonna do is just shave off everything below like 100 hertz. And on a female vocal, there's not a lot of it, but you can see there is a little bit of this low stuff. This is just gonna go ahead and get rid of any potential for this vocal competing with the low end. Now the next thing that I'm noticing, there is something a little bit harsh in this vocal. So I'm gonna basically go through and see if I can't figure out where that is. I'm actually kind of thinking it might be in this one to 3k range and believe it or not i'm not like super good where i can be like oh it's at like 1835 or whatever i can't do that i changed my mind to realize yeah so it's right there it's kind of like this telephonic kind of a sound so just listen to this with the eq boosted here i changed my mind especially on the word mind when she kind of opens up that vowel that's when it's really cutting through so i'm going to come in here i'm just going to cut out a little bit of this i changed my mind all right, and that sounds a lot better already. This is kind of before with it bypassed. I changed my mind. So just hear the word mind on the I sound. Here we go. I changed my mind. This is a little less harsh. And these are typically very small decisions. Obviously, if you have vocals that you're recording in a really bad room, it's more likely that you're gonna have build up right in the 200 range. And this is typically where you're gonna start finding lots of issues. And if you're working in a, a really bad room that has bad reflections, you're also very likely gonna have some ringing happening a little bit higher that you need to be aware of and make sure that you cut those frequencies out. So on this particular vocal, this is really the only thing that I'm thinking I'm gonna have to do on the corrective side. Just get a little bit of a cut at about 1K to get rid of that, that harsh vowel that we were having. Apart from that, I really like the tonal characteristic of this vocal already. It already has a little bit of grit, already has a little bit of edge, which is what we want for the context of this track. And really, I've been more focused on trying to get awesome recordings so that this part of the process requires very, very little work. And real quick, I wanna let you guys know that for the very first time ever, I'm gonna be putting on a live workshop on Saturday, October 15th. 
I'll be teaching you how to produce a track completely from scratch based on a vocal stem. So if you've seen my producer battles, that's what I'm gonna be teaching you to do. It's super affordable and it'll be a jam packed hour and a half of wonderful goodness. And you'll be able to ask questions all along the way. And I have a sign up link down below in the description and in the comments section. Now back to the video. Now we move to step three, which is the initial compression. So this is where we're actually gonna start taming the peaks of the vocal to gain more control over this. So you aren't going to be going for a heavy compression here. We're talking about three to five dB of compression. So for me, I tend to like using a, more of a two-way style compressor. I'm just gonna go and use the stock Logic one just to make sure I'm not using stuff that you might not have access to, which this would be the Vintage Opto. Now a typical two-way compressor is actually going to look like this instead, just with the two knobs. Uh, I don't really like the fact that the Logic one has more than that. We're gonna turn auto gain off so it's not adding or making up any of the gain. All we want to focus on is just getting peak reduction going on. We're going to set this to a four to one ratio which is a very standard ratio for vocals and then we're going to use the threshold to basically figure out where we need to start putting this to, to actually start pushing down the vocal. So the threshold is ultimately going to determine when the compressor actually starts squeezing down. I'm going to keep the attack and release on auto. I changed my mind to realign. Okay so you can hear on realign that was going a little above 5 dB so we're sitting here at like minus 28. I changed my mind to realign. So it's really on these loudest transients, the loudest parts of her vocal is really where that compressor is starting to actually rope in the control. This is actually gonna allow us to get maximum volume out of the vocal without having any issues of these transients poking through and causing any sort of clipping. And really that's the only thing we need to do for that step. So now we go to the next step, which is de-essing. Now the whole point of de-essing is to just get rid of any hard S's and sibilance that it's cutting through. And so for me, I'm typically gonna go, I'm gonna pick a wide band preset and we're gonna adjust this and you're going to see what it's actually doing here. I changed my mind to realign. I changed my mind. So on change, change, that's where you can see the dial actually going up here. Let's turn it off. Here, listen. I changed my mind. It's very accented on that change. And now when we turn it on, it really tames that word. I changed my mind. Now, I don't really know if I want to have that much coming off. It's I don't want it to sound lispy. And this is what's going to happen. If we set this too much or set the reduction to too much, watch this. I changed my mind. Obviously, that sounds really, really bad. We don't want to be doing that. So we're going to set this to maybe more like 5 dB of reduction. And we're going to change this threshold so it's not kicking in quite as much. I changed my mind to realize. So that's without the DS. And again, we're listening to the sibilance of ch, ch, that sound. I changed my mind. Without. I changed my mind. With. I changed my mind. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. And so this is, again, a, a relatively subtle thing. But as we get further along in the process, once you start adding your spatial effects like reverbs and delays, those sibilant sounds can cause so many problems. You want to make sure you get rid of it with de-essing. All right, so that brings us to the next step. Now, this is where the plugin chain is going to start to ultimately deviate depending on what it is that you're going for. And this is why there is no such thing as a copy paste vocal chain that will work in every single situation or scenario. So from here on out, I'll explain some alternative options depending on the track because you just copying what I'm doing might not actually be the right thing for your production. So in this particular case here, if we back up and actually listen to the context of this track. I changed my mind to so in this particular case, what I'm gonna do next is actually go for adding some EQ in here. Now we could do this a handful of different ways. There are a lot of different plugins that you could use. You could be going for fresh air. We could be going for using oxygen by Black Salt Audio, or you could just go straight with an actual EQ plugin to start boosting some. So I'm gonna show you this here. We're just gonna go ahead and use the vintage EQ, the tube EQ inside of Logic. This is the one that I tend to really like. I think this is a great sounding EQ. Now the reason I'm using this to boost frequencies is because this actually adds a nice color to the sound as opposed to the channel EQ right and here is a very neutral sounding EQ. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna boost somewhere between six and eight K. And we're gonna listen to this now. I changed my mind to All right, so I'm gonna turn this off and we're gonna listen solo out and then I'll show you in the context of the whole track. So this is bypass first. I changed my mind. Now it is with a, a four dB boost at six K. I changed my mind. So it adds some grit, it adds some edge, some stuff that was already there, but it's just kind of pulling it out a little bit. And there is a little bit of drive on here. Just so you know, if you pull this up, it'll automatically have some of that. So basically just putting this on there alone can in some cases just make your vocal have a little bit more of a cut to it, which is really great. And if we listen to the context of the track, this is with it off. I changed my mind. 
All right, let's listen to it now with it on. I changed my mind. Turn off now. To realize. Turn on. I changed my mind. So it adds a nice like cut to it. Now this is adding more of a cut to it and less of a sparkle because the style of EQ that I'm actually using. So if we were to want to do something that was maybe more of a nice sparkle or a shine instead of a cut, I might actually go for more of the Black Salt Audio Oxygen plugin. And this is gonna have a more smooth sound, a little bit more control over that. So we're gonna crank up oxygen here. All right, so let's just go ahead and listen to this now. This is with it off. I changed my mind. Now with it on. I changed my mind to realize. So let's just go ahead and compare the 2BQ to the Oxygen plugin. So here's the 2BQ. I changed my mind. Here's Oxygen. I changed my mind. So it's really subtle differences. You might not really care. You might not have a preference. For me personally, I'm going for the 2BQ in this case because I actually do want a little bit more of that edge and grit and cut to it that the drive is actually adding. I also really like the PsyQ from Sound Toys if you're looking for other plugins like this to use. And from here, we have one more thing that we can do before we're ready to start adding in the spatial elements or distortion or any of these other things that are the last 20%. And that is to add a second layer of compression. Now this is a very common technique used by pro mixers called serial compression and we are going to go for it. Now this is where we would actually want to grab a style of compressor that is going to add some color, some grit, some power, some punch. So in this case again I'm going to go ahead and just use the Logic ones just to show you how good these things sound and I'm going to try out a couple different ones. I'm going to try the Studio FET, the Vintage FET, and then we might actually try the Vintage VCA. I'm actually going to toggle between them to just show you how different each one of these sounds. So we're going to set our ratio to 4 to 1 again and we're going to go ahead and turn auto gain off and let's go ahead and set the threshold so we are again only cutting between 3 and 5 dB. I changed my mind. With it on. I changed my mind. Now it is quieter, so we're gonna go ahead and add some makeup gain to just make it so that these are equal on the in and the out. I changed Without my it. mind. With it on. I changed my mind. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what the vintage VCA sounds like. I changed my mind to realize. So this is back to the Studio FET. I changed my mind. We're going to switch over. To so what I'm noticing is that the Vintage VCA is actually allowing more of these highs to come through. It's retaining some of those highs in punch and edge, whereas the Studio FET actually has a darker color to it. So let's actually look at the Vintage FET now. So let's go from the VCA to the, uh, the Vintage VCA to the Vintage FET. I changed my mind. To realign. And they're very, very similar. So in this case, I think I actually like the Vintage VCA a little bit more. So we're gonna go and keep that here. Let's go ahead and actually listen now in the context of the whole track. I changed my mind to realign. You think you stand a chance when Okay, so now I know you might be thinking, that's a lot of steps. How much does this actually change the sound of this vocal by making all of these small little decisions? Well, let's go back and actually take a look at what this sounds like with all these plugins completely bypassed. So here's the vocal, completely raw with no plugins. I changed my mind to realign. So now let's take a look with all the plugins. I changed my mind to realign. So this sounds punchier, it has more aggression to it. It actually sounds louder, but if we look down here, we're still only down here at minus 6.2 dB, which is almost the exact same volume as what we started with, but it does sound louder, and that's because the compression is making this vocal sound more fat. So we are 80% of the way there. The final things that you would need to do on this to get this completely done is reverb, delay, and maybe some distortion if you wanted to add some distortion or saturation. So I'm going to do this real quick. I'm just going to add some of these plugins in here. I'm not going to really go through this because that's a whole different topic that I've talked about. I'm going to show you what this sounds like once we actually add those spatial elements. So all I did here is added some reverb and a little bit of delay, and now we wind up with this. I changed my mind to realign You think you stand a chance when You've already left, there will be no next time to I 
And if you are interested in doing that live workshop with me on October 15th, I have a link down below in the comment section and in the description for you to join. I'll see you there.